Hi everyone and welcome. I'd like to introduce you to several new brushes that are introduced in the new Sargent brush category in Painter 2019. I'm Karen Boniker, Corel Painter Master, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to these new and exciting brushes. Many of these brushes are what we call drip method, and the drip methods interact with the underlying colors to basically distort the image, to give it a very um, smeary effect. Brushes using this method, for example, Sargent Brush Artists and Smeary Wet Sponge in the Palette Knives and Sponges category, mix in the current color with the underlying brush strokes and it creates a real nice oily effect to the brushes. The brushes work both on the canvas and on a layer and support transparency and work in conjunction with preserved transparency and selections. These brushes create very luscious brush strokes that blend and smear and push and pull color, just like real wet oil. I'm going to take you through the brushes so you understand basically how to use them as I uh, try to recreate this painting, um, the Tuscan uh, countryside. When I start my paintings, I usually start with um, some ideas and begin with simple sketches so I can get my value planes in, my lights and darks, and just basically get ideas going. So I visit um, Tuscany uh, often, and I've been there several times during the changes of the seasons. And one of my favorite times is the fall when a lot of the fields have been plowed over and the there's an exposure, and I, I'm going to show you this, of uh, the ground. And as you see, the color of the ground is a very, um, very pale. Um, in fact, it almost turns white in some respects. It's, it's such a pale color, and it makes for interesting contrast with the buildings that are around um, and so you can get these nice value contrasts going on. So with this, with that said, um, I'm going to close this up a little bit. And what I like to do is um, oftentimes if I'm going to be working uh, from a reference, I'll actually bring my image into the mixer pad. And I do that by opening the flyout and choosing Open Mixer Pad and select the image that I'm going to be using. And that way, when I select my sample color option here, I can pick colors from the, uh, from the image and use them. For example, if I was trying to catch this beautiful blue of the sky, I could certainly do that and capture some of the colors as we recede into the uh, background. And especially important are those colors and values that we see in the shadows. This also helps me to keep in color harmony with the rest of the painting as I'm working. But um, oftentimes towards the end of the painting, I will take that painting to another level in terms of color and start doing some of my own thing with color because I do enjoy texture and I do enjoy working with lots of, uh, lots of color. So let's talk about the first brush here, which is the blocky background brush. And this brush um, is one that I would use more for uh, creating the look of clouds or just starting to build in the sky. And I may start with a brush called the, um, the Speckle Sticky Bristle Brush. And I'm going to bring the size of that brush up a little bit and we'll sample that blue. And I'm going to actually add a new layer here because you'll notice that I'm working on a watercolor, a piece of watercolor paper. And a lot of times I enjoy starting my paintings with some texture on the canvas. Um, very intimidating to start with a pure white canvas. So a lot of times I will just take that 
canvas uh, and use my file place command, bring in a nice paper texture and uh, go ahead and lock it. And I can do that right on the layer here by just clicking right there. And you'll notice that we've got that little lock. And then I've added my new layer and I'm going to go up to my sketch layer and we'll set that layer to multiply blend mode and we'll lock that as well. And that way that'll keep us from not painting on it. And uh, what I can do now is to start building up a little bit of color um, and doing some ideas up here uh, in, the, in the sky area with this brush. And you can see right now that it's very, very, very oily, very much um, has that um, oil brush effect to it. And I'm not real concerned about going over lines here. Uh, a lot of this color will just blend just like you were using traditional media. And I'm going to go right up to these, this edge here and just kind of pull it. Many times when you're working with these brushes, you'll also want to take a look at the property bar because this gives you some ideas of what's going on with this brush. And if you're ever in doubt about what a brush recipe is, then be sure to open the general brush controls. And by doing that, you can see that the stroke type is single. This is a dynamic speckle, speckle bristle. The method is plug-in method, which we talked about earlier, and it is a subcategory liquid brush. And that way it tells me a little bit more about what I can expect from this brush uh, going forward. Now, if I want to, I can take this brush down to a reset 0% and bring the bleed up to 100% and the brush will actually do some very nice soft blending for me. So if I'm looking to soften some edges uh, in certain parts of the uh, image, I can do that. And then get back to default by selecting the reset tool on the property bar. And my brush is right back to uh, default and I can continue working with it. I'm going to enhance the color up in the edges a little bit further, so I'm going to take this brush to a little darker value up in the top here. And we'll move over to what we call the blocky background brush, and this is also in the sergeant brush category in a new brush. We'll always reset the brush to default before we start, and I'm going to take this brush up to a larger size. I'm going to take a look at um, the option, the dab options, which is important to just about every brush and painter. This tells you where you can apply a certain profile to the brush, and you'll notice that this is the one pixel edge for this particular brush. And I can apply a dab stencil, and we'll notice that you can use texture, paper, or flow map. Uh, to modify the look of this brush. So we'll go ahead and select Apply Dab Stencil and we'll go ahead and set this to paper. Now if I didn't have my paper panel open already, what I would do is um, go ahead and toggle the papers panel by selecting this option here, Show or Hide Paper Panel. And that way I can change paper and apply that particular uh, texture to that brush if I, uh, if I wanted to. Now I'm going to actually go, uh, uh, go over to a basic paper texture here because I don't want to apply quite as much. And I'm actually going to take it off because I want to do a little more uh, actual blending with this brush and to start building up some of the effects of clouds in this area. So I'll take that darker value right up to the edge here, and here's where you can have lots of fun with incorporating texture into the piece.
I use my Alt key very often in my painting process to establish color that I'm picking from throughout the image. And so I don't want to overemphasize the sky too much. I want to keep it relatively simple. The next brush we're going to take a look at is the simple brush from the Sargent brush category. And this one is a nice one also. You can use it to block in larger areas, but it's also a very fine brush for sketching or bringing in and starting to incorporate the details into the painting. Now you can see that I use this particular brush um, in the background here for the uh, distant hillside and it was important to keep this relatively soft in value. Uh, we want to be able to make sure that this, this distant hillside has that feeling of being in the distance and sometimes I'll even pick up I'm going to pick up this color here and go even a little lighter and grayer. And I'm going to add a layer here. And I think I want to imply a little bit of a distant hill right about here. And I'm just going to take that in as well. A little lighter. Let's catch that value, but go a little lighter, a little grayer. Uh, there we go. That's about right. Maybe even a distant fog bank back here might be interesting. And then because I'm on a layer, I can soften that even a little bit further and push it. We'll just push that area back. That's working pretty good. So we have our sky um, clouds. We've talked about blocky backgrounds, simple, the speckle sticky, the stencil flow map. This brush, when we open up the dab options, we'll notice here that we can also apply paper, flow map, or texture to this brush. And let's take a look at flow map here and let's toggle the option to open the flow map. So this might be um, a situation where you were looking for or wanting to incorporate a little bit of texture into the uh, into the painting. So for example, maybe you wanted to start working into the side of the building. And this particular gravel texture may make a good, uh, you know, would probably be a good start to creating um, that feeling of texture on the side of the building. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another new layer here because I want to, um, I don't want the layer that we were previously on to take away from it. So you can see that we start to build and let me zoom in on this a little bit. So we start to build this feeling of texture within the piece. Now if I were to take something different and let me just go to maybe these uh, uh, fish skin is what it's called uh, and notice that when I apply that you can see how it creates that real oily effect but gives you that feeling of texture within the brush. So you have to find that sweet spot and you also have to find the right texture uh, to create what you're looking for here. So you know in this case I may want to bring this up a little stronger and until I get exactly what I'm looking for and I think this gravel is actually a good choice and I can actually begin to imply it into other parts of the painting here, you know, as I start to work on some of the value changes within the painting. 
but sometimes the most um you know what you're what you want to try to achieve is the most organic look of the brush uh stroke you know the the paint should look very very organic very natural and I'm going to boost that color a little bit and I'm going to take it over a little bit to the red side here and you can see that really nice texture starting to come through this is what I want this is what I'm after this sort of effect um, I will sometimes close the visibility on the sketch layer because that starts to help me to to fill in to you know realize what's going on with the background you know where I need to incorporate some changes um, and then I'm going to go to the last brush here called the grainy pressure knife and we'll open up that again and this one um, this one is probably my favorite brush in the of the new brushes. It's a beautiful brush, very expressive, very sergeantist. Love working with it. And again, I'm going to use my Alt key to sample color here as I start to build in the shape and the forms that I want to develop in the painting. This one, of course, you can always modify in terms of paper texture if you're looking to get um, something different there. I tend to always think of these roofs being a little more on the red side. They're rusty. And then it gives me that ability to play up a little bit of color and light where I need it. Let's go ahead and apply paper texture to this brush too. And I've got a nice canvas that I like working with. We'll make sure that dab option is applied to paper. And that way I can start to play up some of these colors here. I've gone ahead a little bit further um, with the painting so you can get an idea of where I'm going with it, um, what I'm trying to develop. And you'll notice that I've also let go of the tracing, uh, the tracing, the sketching layer um, because I really feel that I don't need it any longer, that I feel like I have enough uh, value, enough form, enough block in created where now I feel like I can go forward with the painting and finish it. Um, one of the things that I often will do is work on layers, but um, there comes a point where I also will drop those layers to the, to the canvas because I feel I've reached a point where um, I'm satisfied with what I have um, and then I can go on to continue to build. Um, the grainy pressure knife, um, this brush, I would also mention that um, if you want a little less bleed, meaning that you don't want the brush to smear the underlying colors as much, you can always bring the setting down a little bit and then what happens is you, uh, you, know, you start to create a little less smearing uh, of those underlying colors and you get a little more pure color if that's what you need as well. So um, very powerful feature there that you'll want to utilize and take it take advantage of. So now the point comes to where you have to start thinking about um, less is more. And in terms of this painting I don't feel I want to go too much farther with it uh, in terms of lots of detail because then at some point things start getting a little bit too crowded it feels like it gets too busy and I think at this point the last feature that I would want to add here was maybe the uh, imp to imply a little bit of a fence line going along the top of the hill here so for that um, I'm going to uh, go back to my sergeant brush category and pick up this brush 
And I'm going to try this one first, um, the Speckle uh, Grainy Hard Drip. And I'm going to bring that brush down to a very, very small brush tip size. And I'm going to pick up some of this lighter value here. And we're just going to work this uh, across the top of the hill here. And um, I don't necessarily want it to uh, to overdo it. Um, I just want to imply a little bit of a fence line here. And because it's so distant, um, this actually, you know, you're not going to, if it was a, you know, say for example, a bob wire fence, you're not really going to notice the, um, the structure of the fence as much as you would if you were, you know, very close to that fence line. So you can really be very, very subtle with this and it doesn't have to be strong at all. And imply it, it doesn't have to, you know, be heavily detailed. And finally, um, I would use this brush just to finish up with little details that sometimes can make um, all the difference in the world in terms of value. There's nothing like adding a little bit of white to a painting or a very light color just to, to bring it alive. And uh, this is what I will often do at the, at, as I'm approaching the end of the painting where I feel like, you know, basically things are coming together pretty well. Again, um, this grainy pressure knife, uh, with it set it to, to default, you'll notice that the bleed setting is pretty high. And that's, that's okay because you might want to you know that might be what you're after but if you don't want uh, you know those colors to bleed quite as much then um, you know you can take that down to a lower setting and uh, I feel at this point I kind of like what's happening I I don't feel I really need to finish some of these lower areas because again I feel that there's also that visual implication that the you know the viewer kind of finishes what they're seeing. A little firmer pressure here on the brush and you'll just kind of blend the color so don't let um, you know I, I just want to be careful that I don't go too far with it and that I lose the simplicity of the piece if I need to blend, um, you know, I'll go back to that coarse blender or one, any of your favorite blenders you could always use here. And there's always a balance um, in your painting where, you know, you want to have enough detail but you don't want to overdo it either. And finally, I'm going to add, uh, let's just go ahead and remove the sketch layer now. We'll delete that. I'm going to add one more layer here, and I'm going to pick up a brush in the glazing brush category called the soft glazing brush. And I use this brush uh, quite quite often. <laughs> um, I especially use it when I feel like some of my values, my darker values, have gotten a little bit too dark. Um, and the last thing we'll do before we do this is we'll go to layers and we'll choose, um, and we've got a, I know we have another 
layer that's locked here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that layer and then we'll go to, we'll remove this one for the time being, go to layers and drop all. We'll add a new layer now and what we're going to do is do a bit of glazing on this layer. Um, I also like to occasionally do what we call flipping the, the canvas horizontally and I'm just going to choose edit and flip horizontally and I want to make sure I'm on the right layer and when I do this um, you know it's very interesting that a lot of times um, I will end up actually liking the composition even a little better flipped <laughs> than I do um, in my original orientation that I was working on. So you have to kind of decide whether it's working for you or not, uh, whether you feel um, it is. And this is interesting because I almost feel like I like this orientation a little bit better. But I'll go ahead and flip it back and we'll just go ahead and finish with it in this orientation because it does have a nice lead in it does have a nice visual flow about it so we'll we'll keep it the way it is right now and then on that uh, glazing layer we're going to do a little bit of glazing in the background we're going to go over to our beautiful new uh, temporal color palette here and uh, pick up a little bit of a purple color, a little on the violet side here, but very light, and um, nice big brush here. And because I'm on a layer, I can you know control that uh, opacity. I'm going to bring the glazing up a little bit higher there because we're not getting a whole lot. I'm going to uh, proceed to push this area back even a little bit further into the distance in terms of perspective. And this gives us what we call um, atmospheric perspective, uh, which gives us that feeling of depth and distance in our piece. And I think that's working pretty good. If it gets uh, too much, of course, because you're on a layer, you can always reduce that a little bit and bring it down. Um, and I think, you know, ultimately, I, I feel this is, uh, you know, pretty well finished. I don't think I want to go too much further with it. I might add one more layer here, change this to multiply blend mode sample this blue color here and maybe go a little darker up in these corners. And the reason I do that again is because I believe in working with gradient planes and in my paintings I like to work with the darker values at the top to the mid and the lightest values at the horizon. And this works nicely for creating that feeling of, of depth and dimension. and it also gives the clouds a little more form uh, within the painting. And the final steps here would just be to, uh, you know, continue to go over the piece to ensure that um, I have nice value contrast. I, if there's any areas of detail I want to bring out, any colors that I want to, you know, pop up a little bit, I can do that. Um, the only thing, the last thing I was thinking of here is maybe picking up one of my brushes um, that I really love working with called a grass brush. And we'll go ahead again and add a new layer and maybe sample some of these colors here. And let me take a look at the orientation of this brush and we'll bring up the advanced brush controls to do that. And in terms of the angle of that brush, I think I want uh, something a little different here. About there is good.
and I'm just going to use that to build up just the appearance of maybe some grasses. all the while kind of sampling those colors around this area. And I think that that kind of completes it. A little visual texture there, which is always nice. And uh, finally, I would use this brush also if I wanted to imply that look of maybe poppies in the distance. We'll do that also on a layer because then we can control and I don't need this brush to be very big. And this is only an imply option here because we can go way too far real quick. Call it a wrap. So I hope you enjoy these new Sargent brushes in Painter 2019. Take care.